In this video, we're going to develop the formula that allows us to calculate the coefficients that are associated with the cosine terms in our Fourier series expansion. To do that, we're going to take advantage of a couple of integrals that we've already reviewed. First of all, the integral over the period of the cosine of um, theta 1 times the sine of theta 2, when theta 1 and theta 2 are, re are integer multiples of the period, that integral equals 0. And the other integral we're going to take advantage of is the integral over the period of the cosine of theta 1 times the cosine of theta 2 dt. And it turns out that when theta 1 equals theta 2, this value does not, or this integral does not equal 0. When theta 1 is not equal to theta 2, the integral goes to 0. But when theta 1 equals theta 2, we get some non-zero value. So here's how we're going to use that. We're going to take this expression, and we're going to multiply both sides of this expression by the cosine of k omega naught t, where k is some integer. So we have, then, the left-hand side multiplied by this k cosine k omega naught t. The right-hand side, every one of these terms, this term, this term, and this term, are each multiplied by that, and we have this. Plus, bringing that cosine k omega naught t inside the sum, since it's a constant as far as the summation is concerned. And similarly, multiplying this term by the cosine k omega naught t gives us that. Now we're going to integrate both sides of this equation over one period. On the left-hand side, we've got the f of t cosine k omega naught t dt <laughs> integrated from 0 to t. On the right-hand side, and let's pay a little closer attention to this now, we have the integral over the period of some constant a sub v times the cosine of k omega naught t. So as we integrate over one period, we will be integrating this term over an integer number of periods. The result of that will be that this integral equals 0. Now, coming over here, we have the cosine of k omega naught t times the sine of n omega naught t, where k and n are integers. So we have the cosine of one thing multiplied by the sine of another thing, where the arguments are both integer multiples of the period. And as we pointed out up here, the integral of the cosine times the sine under these circumstances also yields 0. And we're left with, then, the only non-zero term on the right-hand side is this. And as we pointed out up here, this term, when k equals n, we end up with, then, the cosine squared of k omega naught t, a sub k out in front, when k equal, or when n equals k, these two terms are the same, and we end up with a cosine squared term. We use the trig identity that the cosine squared of something is equal to the cosine of 2 times that something plus 1. And then, of course, there's that scalar of 1 half in front of it. So this center term right here becomes this for n equals k. Otherwise, all of the possible cross products of these for different values of k and n, when you integrate over those, they all go to 0. We're left with only the one value when n equals k or we're left with this one term when n equals k. Now, when we integrate both sides of this equation, better put the dt in there again, we have that on the left-hand side. Here on the right-hand side, when we integrate this over the period t, we're actually integrating this term here over an integer number of periods, and of course we know that that goes to 0 yet we still have this constant of 1. 
Well, the integral of 1 dt is t, which when you evaluate it at the upper and lower limits, yields on this right-hand side a sub k t over 2. Again, when n equals k. So, multiplying, we can solve for a sub k by multiplying both sides of this equation by 2 and dividing by t, and we get then that a sub k is equal to 2 over t times the integral of f of t cosine k omega naught t dt. This then becomes the formula for calculating the coefficients associated with the cosine terms in our Fourier series. We'll be using this formula to calculate the coefficients a sub k, or the coefficients associated with the cosine terms in our series expansion.